Galnet News, your galaxy in focus, 24th of May, 3302. We were escorting a cargo ship to Watson's settlement. As we approached, we were intercepted by a pair of vultures. They asked us to identify ourselves, but I don't think they were even listening. They just opened fire. The cargo ship took a hit, and then my wingmate bought it. I barely made it out alive. That testimony comes from the Niet system, which has become the site of intense conflict in the past five days. Authorities in the system have confirmed that a federal organization known as Niet Jet Life Limited has deployed ships throughout the system and is attacking other vessels at the slightest provocation. Meanwhile, the GR-316 Silver Universal Group, an imperial organization, has dispatched fighters to counter the federal offensive. Nets has long been a contentious territory due to its position between Imperial and Federal space. The system has always tried to maintain its independence, resisting both Federal and Imperial overtures. But many suspected it was only a matter of time before one of the superpowers made a grab for power. Neither the Federation nor the Empire has made an official statement on the matter, with both Federal President Zachary Hudson and Emperor Arissa Lavini Duval remaining silent, but one inhabitant of the system was happy to provide an opinion of the situation. It's no secret that tensions have been raising between the Feds and the Empire recently, so I guess conflict was bound to break out sooner or later. Trouble is, when the superpowers start throwing punches, there tends to be a lot of collateral damage. By the time they're done fighting, there might not be much of Nets left. Both Nets Jet Life Limited and the GR316 Silver Universal Group have promised to reward pilots who support their campaigns. The two factions have set out week-long operations to take control of the system, which began on the 19th of May, 3302. Three individuals carrying pamphlets identifying themselves as members of the Hand of the Architects have been apprehended at Jacques Station. Starport personnel discovered the individuals attempting to modify the station's frameshift drive. A station spokesperson said, The individuals are apparently members of a cult that arose shortly after Jasmina Halsey first claimed to have encountered superintelligent non-human life. Materials confiscated from the individuals indicate that they hope to force a misjump during Jacques' forthcoming journey to Beagle Point. Apparently they thought this would give them an opportunity to meet Halsey's architects. The would-be saboteurs are currently being held at Jacques Station, while Starport personnel discuss possible extradition with nearby systems. This report was written by Commander Jiaotu. A demonstration was held today at Leonacino Orbital in Azalich, calling for the immediate release of all information submitted in response to former Federal President Jasmina Halsey's appeal for exploration data. Speakers at the rally demanded that the Azalich partnership to which the information was submitted release the data so its findings could be independently verified. Something isn't right here. Mountains of data were submitted and within two days they were able to review it thoroughly enough to declare there was absolutely nothing of interest. This reeks of a cover-up. Science relies on openness, collaboration and peer review. It's an integral part of the process. Any conclusions based on secret data should be treated with suspicion. This report was written by Commander Corliss. A Radio Skortsov commentator recently reported that extremists from the Aravat system were attacking traders running liquor and other legal narcotics to Skortsov Orbital. The traders, who hail from all sides of the galaxy, were invited to the system by the Diamond Frogs to supply a party celebrating the return of the Distant Worlds expedition. But recent reports indicate that the Aravat extremists are not the only ones preying on the traders. According to these new reports, some Diamond Frog ships are also participating in the piracy, although there is no evidence that the Diamond Frog's leaders or prominent commanders are orchestrating or participating in these attacks. Numerous pilots have reported being interdicted by hostile Diamond Frog vessels. One disgruntled commander claimed that he had been interdicted multiple times by a number of different Diamond Frog ships. The pilot said, The dingbats keep pulling me out of Super Cruise and it's starting to get annoying. Don't get me wrong, the Diamond Frogs seem like good people, and I'll continue to deliver booze for those brave explorers, but they really need to get their house in order and put a stop to these shenanigans. It's casting a shadow on the whole endeavour. This report was written by Commander Virgil Kyle. The Pilots' Federation have announced a change to current undocking procedures in all starports and outposts. 
After plenty of deliberation and risk assessment, the organization has decided that they will no longer require pilots to have to wait for the blast shields to finish moving before they are released from station docking clamps. Many pilots have been campaigning for this change for over a year now, citing that the blast shields serve no purpose whilst undocking, given the ship has been turned around entirely and they're not in any position to provide protection from engine thrust when exiting. These new changes are expected to come into effect in all starports and planetary outposts this coming Thursday. And that's the Galnet News for today. Tune in next time to keep your galaxy in focus.